I'm making this video on a recent blog post that I created titled Bank Merchant Services. It's an extremely common question that we get and we find that most new business owners will choose their bank to process their credit cards and then they're going to struggle to get out and eventually they'll move away from their bank and find a better option. You know, without fully understanding the industry, it seems like the right play to go with your bank. The reason is, is trust. You know, trust in a person, establishment, or process is usually the most important factor when choosing any type of service or product, especially when it has to do with your money and finances. You know, banks are secure financial powerhouses with long lasting, credible names. So when your bank tells you that they provide credit card processing, it's normal to think that they are the best option. Plus, you're also going to think that you can just walk into your bank at any time and talk to them about your credit card processing, negotiate your rates, you know, ask them questions about your equipment or making certain changes to your account. And I'm going to go over that here in a minute. So, you know, if I were getting into business and didn't understand the industry, I would definitely think that banks are the best way to go. You know, they deal with money and that's what credit card processing is. So it makes a lot of sense, but here's why you shouldn't choose your bank. You know, even though banks, can set up your merchant services, they aren't providing the service in-house, meaning they aren't the actual processor. They deposit money and they issue credit cards to consumers. However, they don't process the credit and debit card payments for merchants. What they're doing is they're sending your information to the credit card processor who then creates your merchant account and gives you the ability to accept debit and credit cards. And then they make money off of you. So. They're going to probably either sell or lease you the equipment, which by the way, is extremely cheap. So whenever you're using a basic virtual terminal or a desktop terminal, mobile swiper, if they're not going to give it to you for free, you just want to buy it outright. You don't want to ever lease this and you want to compare prices before you just pay for what they're trying to sell it to you for. Then they're going to make, monthly residual revenue off of the markup of the credit card processing fees and all the other uh, added fees. So you need to understand that they're doing this to make money and it's not like just an added service that they provide because you're whole, a bank account holder with them. And then if you ever want to discuss your account or you run into problems, the 1-800 number that they provide to you in the beginning goes to the actual processor. It doesn't go to them. So banks hire a team, an acquisition team to sign you up and sign their clients up. They also go after other businesses, but they don't really have a local team in place to take care of customer service. In fact, there's very little to no customer service. So if you walk in your bank three or four months down the road, a year later, you're probably not going to see the person who had you sign on the dotted line. And there's going to be no one in the bank to help you with your credit card processing. They're going to defer you to that 1-800 number, that remote number. And so no one's ever going to be coming out to your business. If you have something that needs to be done hands on, no, you know, they're probably never going to come to your business to help you with those things. So you're basically signing yourself up for long wait times on the phone, emailing back and forth, Things like that. It's uh, If you ever have to change your bank account, you have to go through the, the processor, fill out the forms, get your bank account changed. If you ever have a problem, you have to go through the processor. It's not the bank. So as far as the integrated services that they're going to pitch to you, like they're going to save you money on your bank account, maybe some of the fees that they charge, they might save you a few dollars, but on the back end, the credit card processing, that's an expensive thing to take credit cards. The good thing is, is, you know, you need to take credit cards today and that means you're making sales. So you're never going to pay more in fees than you do in sales. If you're paying credit card fees, that means you're making money. You're, you're producing revenue for your business. So banks are using their credibility and their advantage in the marketplace, which is undeniably, you know, they are the first person you're going to think of for your merchant services because you're skidding your bank account with them. When you sign up for your bank account, that's when they're going to pitch the merchant services. They have a great advantage. 
And they're using that to make an additional stream of, of revenue. So with all that being said, who should you choose for your merchant services? Let me first say that you're going to have an equally secure financial institution processing your credit cards, handling your money, regardless if you choose your bank, a company you find on Google, or a random agent who shows up at your door. None of these merchant providers, that's what they're called, will actually be handling your money in a tangible way. We're all doing the same thing. We're getting you set up with the actual processor, who, by the way, this processor, all these people are probably trying to set you up with the same processor who handles billions of transactions for all the biggest retailers here in the U.S. So what you're not guaranteed, and this is where it becomes important, is low fare rates that are locked in for the long term and dependable customer service. So to achieve this, you need to do some research and find an individual with a proven track record. It may sound like common sense, but for some reason, business owners skip this extra step in verifying who they're dealing with. They often get caught up in this too good to be true savings and rates, and they forget to check the individual that to see if this individual has delivered these types of results to other businesses in their marketplace. You know, why wouldn't you get some references or talk to other businesses, compare their statements, of course, you know, for confidentiality, not seeing who the business is, but just knowing that it's a real statement and knowing that this is what they paid in fees compared to their volume before just signing a contract because some individual said that they're going to save you this type of money or they're going to achieve this rate. So in 2017, we got the internet, there's reviews posted everywhere. So you can quickly do some your, your due diligence and find a reputable agent. If you don't find results on this person that's trying to sell you or the company that they're representing, you know, that's equivalent to zero to one stars for Google reviews. You want to find yourself someone that has a vested interest in your business. They want your business to succeed. They want to save you money. They want you to be around for a long time. You know, that's what I do. So if you want my help, I'll be glad to lead you in the right direction and I'll be glad glad to board you with one of these top processors on a program that will save you a lot of money and provide the support that you need that your employees need not just for you saving money you know your employees and staff it's important for them to have someone that they can reach out to without calling a 1-800 number to get an answer to a question or to help them with a the situation so my information will be in the description below this blog post will also be in the description below. Give me a call and reach out if you have any questions. Thanks a lot.